Okay, we're at 1.34, and we're um, continuing to speak about the things that you can do on uh, regarding Birit Mila on Yom Tov. Obviously, you can do the Birit Mila itself and uh, anything that's associated necessary for medicine. Uh, however, the preparation of the medicine and the bandage, since that can be done before Shabbat, it should be done before Shabbat. Um, if one uh, forgets or does not prepare before Shabbat, the baby is cholesh, yesh po sakana, is in danger, so therefore you got to do something, you don't just leave them, but the Mishnah says you'll do it in a roundabout way um, rather than in a, in a straightforward way. Uh, the problem in general of medicine on Shabbat is uh, crushing, uh, grinding, um, or sifting. Uh, other things like mixing or it might be just a banan, um, but still anything that could be done before, best done before, especially because this is not like just someone that wakes up and has a headache or is sick. Um, this is, you know that you're going to be doing a procedure on Shabbat, so therefore we have to repair from before. So Mishnah, in that regard, teaches that uh, if you did, you're supposed to put cumin onto the bandage. If you did not uh, crush the cumin, prepare it before, then you can crush it with your own teeth and then put it on. Not so sanitary, but they thought that mm, the saliva was probably good. Uh, okay. So now we're going to question that from a baraita tanura banan devarim she'en osin lemila b'shabbat osin la b'yom tov. Not question it. We're just uh, noting that these things, these preparations, you cannot do on Shabbat, but you could do on Yom Tov. You have to beat milan Yom Tov, and uh, you didn't crush it from before. Maybe you don't even have to crush it from before because you're allowed to crush spices because that's part of cooking. So since you could do it anyway. So, for example, things that you could do on Yom Tov is crush the cumin and to mix the wine and oil. That's the mixture that you put on the bandage. Uh, okay, so let's make, let's analyze that. Why can you uh, grind the cumin? Because you could put it into a pot. So since you could do it for cooking, so you could do it also for healing. But wine and oil, also you should be able to prepare on, on Yom Tov and even on Shabbat, because these are things that if someone just was regular sick, maybe even um, because you just, you're just mixing. So while you couldn't do it for no reason, if someone became sick on Shabbat and Yom Tov, so then you would be able to. How do we know that you, one can do this mixing uh, on the regular Shabbat, and therefore you should be able to do it also for the Berit Mila from the following story, which this proof is going to last all the way till here. Uh, this is, I, I like this proof. I, I wrote about it in an in a article, in a book. Um, the first opinion says you cannot mix them, it's medicine. The second opinion, Vimir says, you can. Now, Amar Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon ben El Azar, the first opinion says, a story, one time Rabbi Meir himself was sick, had an eye disease. And we wanted to prepare this for him because after all, Rabbi Meir says it's allowed. Amar Debarecha Yibatelu Behayecha. And, and then we told him, um, and he did not let us. And we said, Rabbi, your words will be canceled in your own lifetime. If even you don't follow your own opinion, then certainly a next generation is not going to follow your opinion. This is even though it's true, I say it's allowed, but my colleagues disagree and they prohibit. And so, therefore, never in my life have I uh, violated the words of my colleagues. So, so he was stringent upon himself. But now, this is the Talmud talking, this is not part of the Braita. But it seems that for everyone else, he was, he was stringent, he, he permitted, right? So he would, he would be stringent on himself, but he permitted, he permitted this for everyone else because that was his opinion. He just didn't want to personally offend his colleagues. So um, that's the point of the question. Since he does permit it, he permits it for everyone else. So therefore, you see that it is permitted, and that's to be Meir, and Stam Mishnah is to be Meir. So that means our Mishnah, right up above, 
uh, would also be able to be Ma'id. And so the question is, why um, uh, why should you say that this is pr prohibited to do on Shabbat and Yom Tov, according to this Baraita, uh, since one can mix wine and oil just for any regular uh, sick person? Okay. Um, good. This uh, is interesting because this derivation that they have here, that for everyone else, he said it's allowed, and the uh, Yishami version is actually part of the story. He, they tell him, even though you say, he says, even though I am, I permit for every, everyone else, I am machmir upon myself. He actually says that, so it's not just a derivation. Um, uh, yet the Bavli, so in the Bavli here, you see that it shows uh, pluralism of, of practice, because he does allow it for everyone else. And in the Yerushalmi, they emphasize the other part that he's machmir upon himself to show that um, you should have uniformity of practice. So since the story is kind of ambiguous because there's both uniformity and pluralism, whether you're looking at if it's for others or for himself, you can use it to prove both ways. Okay, so that was the question. Hatam la ba'a hacha ba'a Now in that case, it does not need to be beaten fast, you know, just for the eye patch. So you're just putting wine and oil. But for this case, for the brit milah, you have to have to beat it like an egg. And so that's where it becomes more problematic and that's why it's not allowed here um, on Shabbat. Okay, so even here too, if it is on Shabbat, so why not just mix it and not beat it? It will still be effective, won't it? Yes, that's exactly what the Mishnah says. If you forgot to beat it before Shabbat, then just place them, put one first, put the other first, and they'll mix on their own. And that is, in fact, what we what we would do. Okay, so more about Yom Tov. In general, on Yom Tov, if you're although you're allowed to prepare food, you can't prepare anything that could have done you could have done before, and so therefore you can't strain mustard in a strainer because you could have strained that before. Also, uh, they used to put a coal, put a hot, you know, put a hot coal in it to uh, to burn it, and that would make it uh, taste better. And that also cannot do on Yom Tov. You could have done it before. But we have a Mishnah says you can put uh, an egg, an egg in a mustard strainer on Shabbat. So therefore, look, you're allowed to use a strainer. You put the egg in, the whole thing comes out. So it doesn't look like you're straining, but the mustard actually does um, does at least look like it's straining. The opposite is you can put a coal in the mustard seed and, and uh, that way burn it and make it, make it taste better. One where it's allowed is a piece of metal that you heat it up and you put the metal in there. That's fine because the metal will just cool down and there's uh, no prohibition. Whereas the one with, with wood, um, uh, taking wood and putting it in there, it's going to get extinguished. It's going to cool down. And uh, then you would be preparing a wooden a, a charcoal, a wooden charcoal that would be usable and making it better for the next time that you use it. And so that, since it's uh, extinguishing for a positive reason, is more problematic than the metal. This is what's the difference between with a meat, you put meat on the coals and uh, that, that way it cooks and you can do that on Yom Tov, uh, even though the coals are going to get colder and become extinguished through that. Over there with meat, you, there's no way to do it before Yom Tov. I mean, you could, you could do it before Yom Tov, but it won't be fresh meat. Uh, the next day, it's not going to be very tasty. Uh, so therefore you're allowed to do it. But with mustard, it's, it's the same taste, not losing anything by doing it the day before, so therefore you cannot do it on Yom Tov. What do you think about making cheese? No, we can't make cheese. Why not? Isn't the same as kneading dough? That's the same kind of similar process. Uh, with dough, if you make it yesterday, day old bread, not as good. You want to have fresh bread. Whereas cheese, uh, day old cheese is perfectly fine. So therefore, there's no need to do it today. Hold on. Uh, the, the rabbis of Nehardeah say, They say fresh cheese uh, is, uh, is very good. 
Uh, no, what they mean is that uh, fresh, even fresh cheese is good, but if it's older than that, it's even better. I mean, it's okay, they have fresh cheese. Uh, if you make it, make it you know, a day or two earlier, that's even better. Okay, good. So um, now the Mishnah says, talk about the bandage that you use to uh, uh, bandage. So it looks like a, a little pouch um, and uh, that would be put on top of the Brit Milah. And the Mishnah says, you should prepare it from before Shabbat. If not, um, then uh, you can carry it in an indirect way, you put it on your finger and then carry it out in the courtyard on, on your finger. So that way you're kind of wearing it. Uh, or you use uh, just some rags and shape it into something, but you can't uh, go and just carry it uh, in a regular way. So this is a special bandage. And uh, over here, Abaye is going to, we're going to have a series of uh, advice from Abaye's mother, says M. Uh, it seems Abaye was an orphan, so this M is actually his, uh, his nurse uh, his, or stepmother who brought him up, and uh, she was an expert. Um, expert in, in baby care. And so Abaye uh, relates uh, many different pieces of advice that he heard from her. Is when you put this pouch on, make sure you do it uh, uh, upwards so that the, uh, the strings will be down on the, on, on the shaft and the strings won't be on the wound itself, because if they are, then as it's healing, those strings will be inside the wounded part and heal over it, and when you remove the bandage, it will mutilate the member. Um, so uh, that sounds like good advice. Uh, she, this uh, woman, she would make uh, uh, one that's a halfway pouch, um, that way it would not uh, cover uh, or not damage um, uh, the wound with those strings. If you don't have a pouch, you can take a garment with a hem and put the hem, you know, folded there, and that way, since it's hemmed, it won't have extra strings that can uh, cause harm. Uh, a baby who uh, can't find his anus, um, or maybe it's covered over with skin. So rub some oil, go before the light, and you can see where it's a little bit transparent. Uh, tear it with a barley grain, um, but not with metal because that will cause swelling, infection and swelling. If a baby is not nursing, well, it means its mouth is cold, so bring uh, some coals and put it near its mouth, warm up its mouth, and then it will nurse just fine. Okay. Uh, baby that can't urinate, uh, put it in, in a sieve, shake him around, and he will urinate just fine. Uh, uh, the baby's not breathing well, so take the placenta and put it on him, and that will help help him breathe. You saw this above, that uh, somehow the placenta is kind of parallel in some kind of sympathetic magic uh, or homeopathic uh, 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 medicine, uh, and, and then parallel with the baby, so that often they would bury the placenta and, or keep it warm, and that was uh, helpful to it. So here also the placenta will help it breathe. <laughs> The baby is too small. Um, take the placenta, it has a narrow and wide part, and, and uh, rub it on the baby from the narrow to the wide part, and that way it will, just like the placenta is getting bigger as you move it, so too the baby should get bigger. But if the baby is too big, uh, then rub it the opposite way, and just like the placenta is getting narrower, so too the baby will get narrower.
ויאמר לי אם היינו כדסו מקי, כתלה לבלד בי דמה לתרחו לה עד לבלד בי דמה ולמהלוהו. If a baby is very red, it means that its blood has not yet been absorbed into its body well. And if you do bring me law with a red baby, it might bleed too much. So therefore, wait, uh, delay the, the milah until it, uh, until the blood gets absorbed. The yarok v'akati la nafal be'edimah l'itrachu ad nafal be'edimah ve'limahalu. And similarly, if it's uh, pale, we say green, usually it's green, but yarok can, can mean also yellow. If it's pale, means that the blood is not, doesn't have enough blood yet. Um, and so therefore it will not do well if you do b'dimila, so wait until it develops more blood and then do circumcision. So this is what we, we do. Of course, we, it's not because of uh, too much blood or too little blood, but because of the bilirubin uh, count that causes uh, it to look more yellow, uh, which most of the time is probably not dangerous to do b'dimila. Uh, they, they give vitamin K and things like that, but obviously. Is, the is this the do. source? Is this the only source we have for this halakha? I don't know if it's the only source, but this is a source. So it's this, the nurse mother, the, the adopted mother. <laughs> she, was, she, was she apparently yeah. had a lot of experience, yeah. and uh, you know, and uh, uh, it's uh, it's ratified by Abaye. Uh, so um, this is good standing. Um, I mean, there are cases where jaundice does indicate something more serious. So. Uh, you know, definitely needs to be looked into, but I think most of the time it's not uh, it's not technically a uh, uh, a reason not to do b'dimila. But okay, it's a complicated subject. The Tanya Amar Rabbi Natan Pam Achat Halachti Lekarchayam Ubat Isha Achat Afanai Shemala Ben Adi Shon Umet Sheni Umet Shel Shire Betiv Vebe Vehebe Hebi Ato Lefanai Betiv Shehu Adam. There's this woman. Uh, down in the uh, at, at the coast, this is being a tan, this is being a tan habavli, the fourth gen, the fourth generation tana, who like Hillel comes from Babel. It's always very interesting to see because we don't know very much about what was going on in Babel during Tanaitic times. We don't have any, you know, we don't hear of any yeshivot or any uh, actual activity in Babel. Although surely there was, um, because we have people coming from there who are extremely learned, and you know, and right after. Uh, that we have the Amari, Amari period where the centers in Babel are um, uh, are very strong. Um, so anyway, he comes from Babel and then lives in Israel. And one time he went to the coast of Eretz Israel and found this woman uh, who uh, unfortunately lost two sons from Tibrim Ilan. The third one uh, brought it to the Sri Natan. He saw two red. Just wait a while and then Blood will be absorbed. And they called the baby after the rabbi's name saved his life. They called the baby Natan from Babel, even though that baby was not from Babel. Another case, we went from Alach to Yetzel Medinat Kapot Kiya, this uh, city in uh, Turkey. Same story, she lost two sons. Third one brought to the rabbi. But this one was too pale. And I checked him, I see he could not, he could not find blood, um, uh, enough blood. And, you know, even if, if he did bid me, I wouldn't, wouldn't bleed. That's not good. So they waited, blood entered him, and the Brimila went fine, and he lived. And again, they called him also Natan Habavli, even though he was from the north, not from Babel. Okay, so uh, all good. Uh, good uh, um, sounds like the same. Sounds like the same story. Sounds like the same story, but it's the opposite. I mean, look, if he was the expert on this, so he would know he knew how to diagnose. So once he got a reputation, so he would know how to diagnose if it's too much this way or that way. And the proper pay is calling him Natan Bavli, calling the baby Natan Bavli. It doesn't say he demanded it. They, um, they were so happy and inspired by him that they wanted to, so. Um, okay, good. Now, next Mishnah. Okay, we can wash the baby with uh, with uh, warm water uh, is the problem here, right? So assume that you're uh, probably heating up the water on Shabbat. And so, well, since this is a 
Um, so you could do anything, um, both before and after. You've got to keep it warm. And so that's allowed to do on Shabbat. The second line seems to bring it back and says, no, you can't just wash them in a regular way, but you can only, not, not with a, a utensil, but rather only sprinkle it on him by hand. Uh, I mean, part of the problem of bathing is not only heating up the water, but kind of general gives it up about bathing because you might come to heat up the water. So uh, even that has to be done in a roundabout way. Is more lenient. And he says you can wash the baby on the before and after, and even on the third day. Uh, that's a dangerous day, as we learned from Shechem, uh, when the uh, the the the, uh, the Shechemites all got brit milah on the third day, they were in pain. So you see that the third day is a very dangerous day, and so for a baby as well. Um, it's important for them to have have a warm bath on the third day, and the Bielaza says you can even do that on Shabbat. Um, now we have Safek, we'll get back to that. Androginos and Mechalina Navata Shabbat, Vyuda Matir, Be Androginos. Okay. Safek, some whatever reason, you're not sure if you need to do Brimila, for example, if the uh, baby is uh, very sick and was not going to make it. Um, and so, uh, and so, so, you know, already considered like a terefa. Or androginos, a nice Greek word that means andro, man, and uh, uh, gunos, like a gynecology woman. So he's man, woman. He has both um, uh, genitals. So he also, uh, when, since uh, we're not sure, does he need bimila, does he not? Uh, so we're not going to, we will do bimila, but we're not going to violate Shabbat to do it. Uh, that's the Tanakh Kamar. Buddha says in Parandroginos, you do. He has he has a male member, so you do you do it for him. Um, okay, that's the Mishnah. Now the Hamat Resha Marchisin. The beginning of the Mishnah is quite confusing because at uh, first you say you wash, and then it says no, don't wash, only sprinkle with your hand. Well, well which one is it? We're going to see two interpretations. The first one's more Mahmir. Uh, these two sages, it's as if you have to put in the word ketzad, as follows. So you do wash, and how do you do that? So it's not a contradiction. First, it's just general. You can do some kind of washing, but specifically not a regular washing, only by hand. Okay. So that and that would be uh, uh, that would be stringent, and according to that reading, the Bi Azad ben Azaria would come and say, "No, you can read, you can wash it normally, and you can even do that on the third day." So they're also arguing about the way you wash it. Ahmad he has the second interpretation that's more lenient. But after all, the beginning says so it's still a contradiction. The first line is talking about the regular case on, on the day of Brit Milah itself. You can wash normally with the utensil. And the second line is talking about on the third day, there it's less important. So you still wash on Shabbat, but that one you do with a with a, by hand. And then the Bi'al Zabin Azariah comes and says, Marachis Yat Gatam Be'am Rashi Lishi, Shachal Yot Shabbat, Shene'emar, Be'am Rashi Lishi Be'am Tam Kwa'abim. And he disagrees and says, on the third day you can wash regular. But they agree, both say, both opinions agree, that on the first day, on the day of the B'rim Ila, you can wash in a normal way. Okay, that's the two opinions. Tanya Kibateh De Rabah, we have a proof for the second lenient interpretation. Marachis Yat Gatam Be'am Lishi Be'am Mila, Be'am Nachal Mila, Be'am Rashi Lishon Kedar Ko. That's exactly what Abbas said. Uh, everyone agrees on the on that on that day you wash normally. If you did the Brimila on Thursday, then on by Shabbat it would be the third day, then you can only do it by hand. Uh, so here it uses this phrase uh, in the Mishnah it just says Shinemar. Right and quotes it. Why? How come in this Bedaita it says this phrase? It's not a proof, but rather only a a hint, only an illusion. What's wrong with this? 
a lot of times this uh, as uh, 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 um, uh, this phrase means um, Asaf Rosensvi uh, in Israel wrote a, wrote a his dissertation and, and an article about this phrase. Um, a lot of times when it says there's no proof, but rather the Zechel Adav is quoting a pasuk from Nevi'im and Ketuvim. And that led a lot of people to say it's not a proof because it's from Nach. However, you see, as you see here, many, some of the cases are not are from Torah. So why not say it as a proof? Why is it saying it's only an illusion? It seems that the problem here is that it's from a story, uh, right? It's not from a legal section in the Torah. So a legal section, then you could learn it as a proof. But if it's not a legal section, then it's a bit weaker. And so they can't call it a proof, but rather only a, an illusion, a mention. But interestingly, that's only in the Baraita here. The Mishnah seems to have no problem in this case, calling it Shene Emar. Uh, okay, good. And the Baraita continues and says uh, that when you sprinkle, you do it not with the utensil, but with by hand. Now that, Atana Tana Kama, we're just mentioning, this is the comment, this, that this fact uh, is the opinion of Tanakama, right? In other words, it's not, the Braita is not quite in order. First it mentions, Tanakama says, on the first day you could do it normally, on the third day by hand, then it mentions, yeah, this is on the third day you could do it normally. And then it says, oh, for Tanakama, what, what does that mean? And explains further, not with any utensil. My and What does that for? Why did you say that phrase? Uh, okay, this is different than what I just said. Mishum de Gadol la Selek Bisra Haya Katan Selek Be Bisra Haya. Because the case that we're learning from is different. In that case, regarding the men from Shechem, those were adults. And uh, for adults, maybe it takes them longer to heal. And that's why on the third day they were still uh, in pain. But babies heal much more quickly, and so there's no proof from the fact that an adult is in pain on the third day, that a baby is also in pain on the third day. So it's not a proof, but rather it's just an illusion. In fact, it is uh, true that the baby also needs a bath on the third day. Uh, someone came and asked Rava a practical question about this. You know, it's the third day, can I wash my baby? Um, and he said, yes, go wash it normally, because that's his opinion. However, after he gave that Pesach Alakha, he got, he got ill. And he says, well, you know, why am I ill? Must be because of that. He says, why, why did I get in the middle of, this, of, these, two, of these interpretations of the elders? Um, you know, in other words, he had his opinion that he said as, as theoretically, as an explanation of the Mishnah. But then when, you know, when it became practical and now he just told someone, and which means that according to the other opinions, they violated Shabbat. So he felt uneasy about his decision. That's very interesting that, you know, you, you know, often, you know, when, whenever we find these different interpretations, was it always in practice? And at least here, it looks like it was always theoretical until someone happened to come and actually ask. So his, his students, his colleagues say, you know, why are you depressed about this? Uh, why you feel bad? After you had that B'dayta, we just read the B'dayta. That's word for word, exactly your interpretation. So you have good proof. He says, yeah, I know that's true, but the Mishnah itself, if you look carefully at it, it does seem to be according to the other interpretation that Rabbi Yudha uh, and Rabba but Avu said, uh, how do we see that in the Mishnah itself? So you see from the language of the second opinion of Real Zabin where he says um, uh, that we wash Marchitzin, right? So then that makes sense because the first opinion would say you only sprinkle by hand, and Real says, no, Marchitzin. Right, so in other words, it sounds like he's arguing on two points, both on how you do it, you can wash regular, and, um, and the timing as well. Uh, you can do this on the first day and on the, on the third day. Um, if the first opinion thinks that you can actually wash normally, even on the first day, and the Mezalafin is talking about the third day, 
Hi, the Biel has been as the area, Omer Marchitzin, Af Marchitzin, a Baalei. He shouldn't have said Marchitzin as if that's a point of contention. He should have said, uh, uh, you can also wash normally on the third day, because he's agreeing on that point that the uh, Tanakama said also you can wash normally even on, on the first day. He says, yes, I know you, I agree you can wash normally on the first day, and I think also on the third day. So the, that flow fits better with the first stringent opinion. And that's why Rava, even though he had a Baraita for going for him, he was he was not sure, and he saw that the Mishnah may uh, read better according to his colleagues, and so uh, he felt bad about he was not sure about his pesach. Right. right. So the Bid of Dimi, who always comes from Israel and brings uh, traditions, in this case from Rabbi El Azar, uh, the Eretz and he said, we follow the minority opinion here to be Elazar ben which is more mekel. You can wash on the first day and the third day. Avu ba b'marava. In Eretz Yisrael, they had this following discussion. Har chasat kol gufor chasat mila. What does this mean when it says you can wash? Are you washing the whole body, the whole baby, or are you just washing the b'rit mila, the wound itself? Or is this a more mekel or more machmir? Malhu ahura merabanan. Uh, right, so certain sage, and I guess then we remembered his name. His name is Biakov. Mister Bera had chasat kol gufo. Must be that the whole body. This al kad atench al chasat mila mikara mechamin al gabem maka. The marav and monrin chamin veshemin me al gabem maka be Shabbat. It's not his whole body because in a reg in any regular case, you, if you can heat up a little water and just wash the wound, um, and uh, right, Rav said we don't prevent that. Um, from putting using hot water and, and putting uh, applying oil on a, on a regular wound, and so you know that's not that's not bathing because it's just a, a little a bit. So that's always allowed. So if this Mishnah is coming and saying for bring me la, you do something more. So the more must be that you wash the whole body. At Kiflat Rav Yosef challenges Rav Yosef challenges that says Velashani lach ben Chamin Shuchmu b'Shabbat. The Chamein Shachmu ahead of Shabbat. Well, it's going to make a difference between whether it's on Shabbat, whether you heated the water on Shabbat or before Shabbat. And so, yeah, when you heat it, heat it on. Uh, 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 so, yeah, so you're assuming that this is a case where we're heating it on Shabbat, but perhaps we're heating it before Shabbat, and that's why we can wash the whole body. Uh, he disagrees with that. Mat kiflat abdimi. Shabbat peligi. Why are you assuming that, he says to Yosef, why are you assuming that, Yosef, that the Mishnah is talking about a case of where you heat, heated the water on Shabbat? Maybe it's talking about whether he heated it before Shabbat. Rabbi said, I had an answer, but Rabbi Yosef said the answer first, um, and he says, well, this is. Uh, it's dangerous for the, the for the baby because it is a time of sakana. Uh, so therefore, you can even heat heat the water up on Shabbat itself. And so, yeah, that's why he was assuming uh, uh, that uh, the, Mish, the Baraita is talking about on Shabbat, and um, and still it's allowed. If man na mek yata rabbi amar rabbi abahu amar rabbi alazam amar rabbi abahu ba amar rabbi yochanan alak bezam en azaria. Right, another tradition that was before we had Abdimi. Now we have Rabin also says that halacha is like Rabbi Ben Nazaria. Ben Bechamin Shemur Be Shabbat. Ben Bechamin Shemur Be Erev Shabbat. Doesn't matter. Even if you have to heat it up on Shabbat itself, it's all it's fine. Ben Chazal Kol Gufor Ben Chazal Mila Be Pinesh Sakana Hilo. And uh, even if you uh, you can wash the whole body or the or or just itself, uh, all this is considered Sakana the Pashat, and therefore all of it is permitted. I guess here too, we know we usually follow the majority opinion, but we're going to follow the minority opinion also because it's Sakana de so Sakana de we're always going to be, uh, we're always, always, always going to follow the lenient opinion um, uh, for that. Okay, Gufa Amarava, Amarav, we quoted a piece of Rav, now we're going to quote the whole thing. Uh, you apply oil and wine, uh, 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 water, hot water and oil. On a wound, Shmuel Amar, Oten, Chutz the Makkah, Shveshotet Veyoded the Makkah. He's more Machmir. Says, don't apply it onto the wound itself. That's healing. 
and not prohibited, but rather put it right near, right above the wound, and then it will flow down onto the wound, and therefore you're still getting the, the healing properties, but you know, without violating uh, actual uh, direct healing on Shabbat. Because right? just if it's just hot water, if just oil, so you can put oil on another part of the body um, because that's not healing, and then indirectly it will help out. Hold on. Metibe and notnin is objection to Tarav. En notnin shemen be chamin al gabe moch liten al gabe makah ba Shabbat. The Brayta says you cannot put a rag with uh, oil on it on or directly on a wound. So, see, so you can't put it. Well, how do you, how come you said you can? No, but there the problem is that you might come to squeeze out the rag to get some oil out and, uh, and, 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 and get on the wound. So that's the problem. Why? But if you're not using a rag, just to putting it directly, it'll be okay. Tashima, so we resolve that. Another question about to challenge to that. Tashima en notin hamin ba shemen al gabe she al gabe maka ba shabbat. Basically similar. Uh, no, this one was about oil, and this is just mentioned. Uh, chamin, this is Shemin ba Chamin. This is Chamin ba Shemin. Um, okay, by the way, it's basically similar. So, similar challenge, similar, uh, same answer. Hatam name mishum sechita. Also, same thing. You're going to put it on uh, and, uh, on this on this rag. Uh, that's a problem because you have uh, a squeezing. Tanya kebate de Shmuel. Okay, we, we don't have a disproof to that, but we can prove. Shemuel, and notnin hamin veshemin al gabe maka veshabat. Avan notnin chutz la maka veshotet yored la maka. Here you go. You should not put hot, hot water or oil directly on the wound, but you put it outside and it flows down. That's exactly what Shemuel says. So we have a proof for him. Tanura banan. Notnin al gabe maka moch yavesh us fog yavesh, avalo gemi yavesh velo chititin yeveshin. So you can put a dry compress, dry sponge on a wound, but on uh, Shabbat, but not a dry reed and not dry rags. So uh, what's the difference between these? Kashya chetitin akitin. I mean, this is the same thing. You said you can put these, these you, 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 you can put these, the moch, which is dry rags, but you can't put this, which is also dry rags. That's just another word. So what's the difference between this one that's allowed and this one that's not allowed? This is no, it's different. One is about new ones. New ones have uh, are, are healing properties, are good for it. And that would be the prohibited one. But old ones are not good for healing, and therefore those would be allowed. And Abaye uh, says, oh, look, we can learn from here that uh, new regs um, are good for healing. Men vem